Fluid FX80. So uh, Fluid sent me one speaker in the past, the FPX7. I'll try to link it in the description. It's in the wall. It's on the wall. It's all the way over there. And the thing, it's it's the one that's the crazy coaxial with the AMT. And when they offered me speakers back in the day, I'm like, give me that one. It's the most expensive one you have. It looks fucking rad. Give it to me. And that was, what, two years ago now? So they finally emailed me back and was like, hey, you want to do another one? And I'm like, sure. And they had the FX50 and the FX80. FX50 is a five inch version of this. This is the eight inch version. So even though that was a more expensive speaker, that was only a six. This, and I'm, pr there was that one from, um, oh, who did the other, other coaxial eight inch that I was like, oh God, this tweeter is so far back. And I can't, oh, who was that? Shit, it's gonna rock my brain. I should have thought of it before the review. The CCB or the CCV, the HSU, it was HSU Research, was it that? I think it might have been. And anyway, they made that speaker that was like the eight inch with the thing and it was like, holy fuck, it was off axis response, was garbage. That had a lot of things that I was like, this is great, but, well, these are great. The end. Can't play too much music. These are a chunk. So here I have right now for my side channels hooked up the Atom T8Vs, which if you recall, I did those. And I'm like, these are like an audiophile speaker. You could sit these in front of people. And by the way, I put the putting the ceiling on the projection screen place. A little more coming in the mail. But these are an eight-inch studio monitor, and that's normal. Well, that's a normal eight-inch, and there's your tweeter with the waveguide, and it's in a big ass box. These are much more compact chunk. They probably don't take up much less space as far as size, although I think they're actually a little bit shallower than the Atoms as well, but they lose like a solid three inches and you got a front port. These are legit studio monitors. Now I'm gonna walk you through in my head what I think you should do with these, although you're probably not gonna do it because you're you're just like, well, why don't I just buy swans? And I'm okay with you and for this particular scenario, you just buy swans, but I'll put these in your living room. Absolutely, up close, near field, doing actual studio monitory things, excel. Oh God, I almost threw that like through the, that would've been bad. They excel near field. In fact, the sound demo, which I recorded like 30 minutes ago, I put the microphone like here and it just like, wafted into this it boom right into it because that's what a studio monitor is supposed to be doing the, you know when you buy something like well these are the adam amazon basics ones or swans with a remote control they have a gold remote control they have digital inputs this is a studio monitor for those of you who don't know if you're thinking about i want to buy these speakers let me explain the limitations and i was gonna say benefits but really there's no benefits of a studio monitor except for almost guaranteed desktop performance and you're looking at this going, Zeos, isn't that like a baby microwave? Yes, it's like an easy bake oven, but it's designed all studio monitors, studio monitors being self-powered, non-volume controllable here, speakers that are sold individually are very good here, right here, right in your face. I'm doing mixing, I'm doing mastering, I wanna hear the music. Now, if you're a madman, you can get studio monitors just to enjoy music, play video games. You don't have to be a professional to use them. So I am fully endorsing these for that because holy shit, an eight inch. But here in the basement in like the speaker area where I have giant towers and I try to do like more like, not home theatery things, that's over there. But just like, all right, fuck it. What if I were just put these in a living room? Yes. I wanna to try to convince, here's, all right, here's what I was hoping when I got these out of the box. I was hoping that these would be better sounding than Atom T5Vs, not the T7Vs. Well, no, actually actually both. Yes, these are like a big brother to the Atom T5V, but they have the added benefit of being a coaxial. We'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, what I was gonna tell you is a cell, how do I describe this? This, I have to make that video. This is a pair of self-powered speakers. This one has the amplifier in it, it takes your signal. It's got a volume control, it's got a remote control, and you control it, and it's great, and it's nice, and it, it's convenient. This is a convenient set of self-powered speakers. You don't have to buy an amplifier or nothing. 
This is an individualized, individually powered signal accepting unit with a volume control that is not designed for you to go up and lower. The TV's too loud. I'm just going to lower my volume by crawling behind and lasering and lowering that. To use self-powered, to use studio monitors and not self-powered speakers is required you to have some sort of control system for the volume. That's number one. I happen to be reviewing this Rotel RC 1570, which is just a preamp. It has signals come in, whether they're digital or analog, and it's just a volume knob. That's it. That's what that thing's job is. Send it a bunch of signals from different sources, and then volume knob with a remote. So this is fine. Now, if you wanted to use these in a theater, in a home theater or slash, look, fuck sound bars, just straight up. This is not that expensive. These are $500 for the pair for eight inch. What? All right. I wanted them to be better than Atom T5Bs and Atom T7Bs. I just, I just need something that's gonna fill that slot. It's 2021. The Atoms have been my like go-to. And I always said the Atom T5Vs are more fun. They have more low end, they project more, and they're great. But if you wanted to actually do like work, like engineering work, T7Vs. And then T7Vs weren't actually better in a living room. So I needed something like a middle of the line. So this is an eight inch, which is bigger than the T7V and still has that fun, like bassy, like not, not sterile sound going for it. It's very, that's a, that is the finest line in audio as far as I'm concerned. For Zeos and Zeos's fucking reviews is a speaker that can do work, which by the way, I actually fucking love the way this looks. You tell me in the comments what you think. I know what you're gonna say, oh, they're ugly. I think they're kind of pretty. I kind of really, like I love the, the way this like bulges out, like it goes from flat to, to like that. And then the port does the same. It doesn't look like the, the atoms look fucking boring in comparison to these. And then you have the, 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 the coaxial, which we'll, again, we'll get to in a second. So what I'm saying, what was I saying? I was talking, it's, it's late. $500, you get these, you get some sort of remote controllable DAC. This isn't uh, like a $600 DAC, you don't need that. But I will link in the description, something simple, basic. There's an SU9, you put that in your living room, you plug fiber optic into it from your television. You, you, you get a remote control, you get a big volume display, you plug XLRs into the left, XLR into the right. You power them, you set the volume to maximum, you raise and lower the volume. You've killed every soundbar on the planet Earth. You've killed most cheap surround sounds, honestly. If you get away without getting a rear, which I know is like sacrilege for anyone who's a surround sound enthusiast, which I am, but I would rather have an excellent 2.0 than a shitty 5.1. It, it, I think even audiophiles agree with me on that. But then I'm also me, so why not have an excellent 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, 6, 7, 8, 11.4. Just keep going till it's all excellent. Um, I like the look. They're not so big, although they do fill out the Doom stacks. Like that is one of the only speakers that has filled the entire like surface of it. So they have some girth. These these are scary looking in a, li in a little bit of ways. They're a little scary in a little way. They're like awesome. Um, the fluid logo is actually rubberized here, right next to this blue LED. Can you see the blue? When you don't use the speakers for a while, and this is another reason I'm saying, if you put them on your desk or put them in a the living room, when no signal has gone to them and it's just, it's just quiet, those blue LEDs turn red and the speakers go to sleep. Not many studio monitors do that. That's another benefit of specifically these fluids. I think the atoms just stay on all the time. I know those JBLs stay on all the time. Those atoms, is the green light, that's it, they're on all the time unless you actually physically turn them off. Some of them are efficient, some of them aren't. The fact that these will literally go from a fucking blinding fuck you blue to just red sleep mode? Yes. All right, so we discussed them for usage and what I think, I, getting them for your desk or getting them for proper actual mixing and mastering, full endorsement. Living room scenario where for some reason you don't want to get a set of swans that just, you know, plug in, have the digital inputs, have remote control. If you just want an eight inch and you don't want to spend the, you know, I think the uh, Swan 
M500s are like 1200 bucks. So this is 500 bucks. You just have to work out some sort of signal control, which is what I described because XLRs, which by the way, these do have XLR in, quarter inch TRS in, and just a straight RCA in. So if you have even a, a topping E30, Zeos linked to topping E30 DAC, which just has a nice little display that shows you what's going on. You plug fiber optic into it, it's like about $110. You run RCA cables up, you go plug, plug, and then you have your volume control and your digital input and you're good to go. Uh, the back of this unit, we should probably take a gander at, the, oh God, am I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to unplug it. Ugh, power down, because we have to look. They're not actually that heavy either. I'm pretty impressed by how not heavy they are. Um, this material is what I would call rough vinyl. It's just, it's just industrial vinyl. Here's your control surface. Volume control, which isn't actually a volume control, it's more like a gain setting. Since I'm controlling the volume with that unit, I just max this out and we're good to go. Um, you could pick any of these, you don't have to do any switching. I do not recommend you plug any more than one thing in at a time. Then you get this graph, or I guess chart, and that's because these eight dip switches are adjustable. Now, Dip switches, I don't tend to like them. Uh, Cali Audio uses them. And it's very simple, which is why they're doing it. And it also gives you four positions per setting, which is more because you have a switch, you have two switches for each setting. So it's all both down is one, then that's two, that's one, two, three, four. You get four different directions it'll go. So high frequency shelf, mid EQ, very rarely see a mid EQ. Um, acoustic space, which is actually low end, but they call it acoustic space because it has to do with bouncing off the walls. And then there's a low frequency cutoff that if you are using a subwoofer, <clears throat> we'll get to that at the end of the review. If you're using the subwoofer, um, you can actually set this to cut off either at flat 60, 80 or hundred Hertz. So you could actually take the low end away from this. I'm basically going to concern myself with these full base. Fuck it. Let's do this because they're eight inch front ported and I like them. So I have all these switches at the bottom, which means we're going flat, 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 zero, straight down the line. Uh, you can't raise the low end, which is a slight annoyance. I like when you can bump the low, I like when you can bump every aspect of it higher. We can bump the mid EQ. We can bump the high frequency shelf. We cannot bump the acoustic space. You can only go from zero to negative one, negative two, negative four, and then the cutoff. So here's your main power switch, which you won't need to shut off because it has an automatic. And let's flip you back around. Plug, bend, twist, plug. So, Zeus. Why Zeus? I like them. I don't need any other reason. They're an impact. They're like a, they're like a fist. <laughs> they are just fisting your face. W wait, don't look that up. This is, by the way, a Megalobox OST resolution, and it's just one of those songs. That if I was watching the show, which Megalobox is a great anime, and this song was on, I, I just love. I am not wanting for anything. Lightning. They're just delivering the, the force that I'm looking for in a speaker in an area where I'm recommending. Now, if you're using this on a desk, obviously you'd obviously have this a little bit lower and then you'd be sitting here. I hope that's not enough to get this video demonetized. If it is, thank you for supporting me on Patreon and Subscribestar. Uh, if I got enough people supporting me, I don't have to give a fuck about copyright things. Although they'd still block it worldwide, which would suck. They're so big and open. They're just big. The, the benefit of a coaxial. I said I would get back to it. Now I'm back to it. The benefit of a coaxial. And I don't think Kef makes an 8-inch coaxial. Kef makes like 6-inch coaxials. This is the biggest coaxial you could... Basically, it's the newest, biggest coaxial I could think you could buy. Most companies don't try to do this because most companies are afraid to do this because there are some limitations. When you put the tweeter, and that's what's there, that is the tweeter floating 
on a fixed unit and this driver moves around it, the benefit of it, and you could ask Kef about this, uh, it's not a car speaker thing, I don't care about car speakers, but or, or in-ceiling speakers, those don't count. But the benefit of it is that when I look at that speaker, that speaker has audio coming from one place, the point, the middle, because the eight inch is forming here and that's forming there. When I look at this speaker, it's coming from two places, the top and the bottom. And there's a time alignment issue where, where that speaker's, even though it's only like, come on, Zeos, the human ear is not that good. It, it kind of is. It's very fucking weird how accurate the human hearing is and then we can't tell the beats suck. Um, where that originates sound five inches below that, you can actually hear the difference, which is why when you get in front of the speaker and both of them are the exact same distance away, it sounds the best. And when you are standing above it or to the side, it's just weird. So by making a coaxial, you're eliminating that problem. But you're also introducing the fact that you now have a moving thing going around a fixed shaft basically hand jobbing this thing. And there has been a point where, I, in fact, you could hear it in the sound demo, where, and I didn't notice it with my with my ear, with my raw ear, but the microphone picked up on it. You could hear just a little bit of air escaping through that gap. When I'm talking about it, it was like a kicking song. We were kicking ass with these. What is that? Gary Clark Jr. is great. I want to just, I want to just, I want to scream. But when it's moving, it has to deal with the air pressure being trapped in that little space. So you get the benefit of no matter where you're standing, no matter what you're doing, no matter where your angle is, it's perfect. You're here. Hi. You did crazy shit today on the mezzanine. She was walking along the thing and she got a bad hip. So I'm like, please don't fall. Yeah. Um, you get the benefit of it always being a one point source. So me though I'm standing here, I'm above the speaker, sounds perfect. Come down here, sounds exactly the same. Down here, exactly the same. So that's a benefit you only get with a coaxial speaker. That's why Kef only makes coaxial speakers because that's their belief. So this is a good way to get an eight inch coaxial, which Kef doesn't make. Why does she only come out for reviews? Literally, when I'm live streaming, she never comes out. When I'm doing a review, I think I have just more energy and she can sense that. <sighs> There's, they're big and I wanna say the word warm, so fucking bad, but that's not what they are. They just produce enough low end to feel like a, like a, like a, a warmth in my heart. That was lame, but I'm keeping it in. But like this song, this is Handsome Family uh, Passenger Pigeons. Of course it is. And it's just acoustic guitar. Like the resonance is there. There's like enough space, enough air that it's moving that the resonance of that guitar is full. It's just a full and it's a hearty sound. And then the, the tweeter comes in and it's just mixed the other ones I reviewed, the other fluids, I gave them like a half good review because they were probably the most violently neutral speaker I've ever heard to the point where I didn't like listening to my music on it because everything that was wrong with my music sounded it. Those were their, their top of the line. They were like 1200 bucks for the pair. So I was like, you know what? If you want to tell me my music is garbage, it's probably because it is. Thank you, Fluid. And then I go and cry. These are so much more tolerable. Everything on it actually sounds good, which may not be the best. I mean, on a desk, it's a little more when you turn the volume down. It's a little bit more like laid back and, well, flattened, I would say. Once you step away from them, you turn the volume up, use them in a room, use them in a fucking, in a space where you can just like, where I'm, I'm just here enjoying music. I'm not here to, to uh, examine this music. I'm not here to fucking pick out all the problems with it. I just want to listen to Handsome Family. And I want to listen to it where an eight inch driver is producing the mid range, the low end. And he's doing a fantastic fucking job on that. Yeah, the imaging, like that's imaging you only get with, it's like shit is just, 
laser point accuracy across. Only a coaxial does that. Because instead of dealing with four points, because here's two speakers, you got a point, a point, a point, a point, and you're just sort of bl trying to blend it. You only have two points. And we're pretty far apart here. We're like eight feet. Ceilings are eight feet, seven and a half feet apart, which is plenty of room for my 50 inch television. By the way, this is Lethal Weapon 2 Leo. I gotta try to convince normal people to buy these speakers. Cause that was the start of this video. I'm like, all right, I love them, but they're not convenient. They're not, like people aren't just gonna run out and buy them for the living room because then you need a, a DAC or some sort with a remote and that's two things you have to buy and all of a sudden people lose their mind. Topping E30, that's it. Just buy that remote control, hook it up, done. But if you are actually looking for mixing and mastering, if you're a college student and you wanna just have something that's gonna work, look fucking way better than KRK. KRK can suck my ass. This looks way better than KRK. And it functions better than KRK because KRK is just Bruce. I've heard them and I'm like, wait, why are people mixing on these? Like they look good, they're heavy, they have that foam thing on the bottom, but they just, I never ever would, like I would take the cheapest JBL over any set of KRKs. And now I take these over most JBLs and the Adams. Do you understand? Like I, I really like those and I haven't even gotten to the subwoofer yet. So. They're just so delicate and yet large. It feels like I'm I'm tapping into a giant fucking well of sound. And it's just just right. And by the way, she's sitting in the circle. She's sitting in the circle. And these are in the circle. Do you understand the effort that goes into it? I use this for the sound demos, so I know that'll get at least caught. Let's see if I got another one from this. Discover the Abyss, Days in the Sun, Crucifixion. Now that's a song title that I need to hear. That's a lot of sound. Like, here's the thing, that whomp, 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 that is not a high-pitched sound. That is a low, thumping sound. And it's imaging from the center. Usually that's reserved for like just the high, as the treble will image in the center. This is the whole, the sound stage is now okay to be wherever it wants to be. By the way, watch Made in Abyss too, that show. That's a show to watch if you don't think anime is different from anything else. Oh, they can make a live action version of this. No, they can't. Oh God. Michael Kamen's Santa from Die Hard. Yes. And I could actually, on this song, I know for a fact that there's a little bit of hiss in the background. I don't know what it is, just Michael Kamen just decided to not do a, a noise gate on it. And I could hear it, and it just it just sizzles in the air. And it sounds, these would honestly probably be amazing to listen to vinyl through. I don't know why, I have this fucking urge to listen to a whole bunch of shit on these. I think it's because they look so weird. It's like, what do you got? I don't know, this stubby bastard. Do you love it? Yes. To have and to hold? Mm-hmm, give me. Especially for 500 bucks. Because Adam T5Vs are 400. These are $100 more, and you go from a five to an eight, and then a coaxial. That's like adding, like just stacking the thing. And they're not, they're very fat, but they're not super deep. And they're not super high. So, so you're basically just buying the fat boys. The f you know what, Zeos? Make sure the title says fat boys. Boys. Although that doesn't seem very nice. Al, let's talk about the sub for a second. Because, um, what song is on? Michael Kamen, Santa Claus. Let's find another song. Hold on. Marilyn Manson. Oh, live from the garden. I'm going to click on the subwoofer for Call Tikachon from Run the Jewels. That's going to wake up. And now, now I've added their 10 inch subwoofer, which um, I normally wouldn't give this its own review and I'm not going to because subwoofers from companies that make, can I borrow this for a hot minute? Wow, I should have a, got a longer cable. I'll show you the, the, the back of this. And by the way, this does a really cool thing and we'll have to show that off. 
Most times, I will not tell you to buy a subwoofer that comes from a company that makes powered monitors. This is only $400. That's not so bad. It's only a 10 inch, and it's not that powerful a 10 inch. The reason you would look for a studio monitor sub from a studio monitor company is the XLR pass throughs. Um, so, right now, I've got the Rotel 1570 feeding signal into this sub. And then it's feeding out of this sub and into the FX80s. So it's just a pass through here and you can see it right here. And it can do that with XLR. Um, it cannot do it with RCA, but it can also do it with TRS. So you have that option to just pass through. Input gain, you have to adjust with a little screwdriver or just really touch it. I think I have it to zero. Um, we set the cross over here and you set your phase there. So like $400 can, can $400 even get you into an SVS sub? Not really. Now, if you bought a, a, a better DAC than the ones I'm talking about, than the cheap ones, some that has uh, XLR outs that you could use for the speakers, you could then get any subwoofer, use the RCA outs that are paired with most cheap DACs, go to any sub you want. But now this sub has a couple interesting features that I want to talk about. The way, this is the FC10S, which is just a weird name. So you have your unbalanced and balanced inputs and you have your outputs and i don't believe for the life of me that the uh crossover here cuts off the crossover to the speakers see that would be something you'd still have to adjust with the dip switches in the back you have to cut off the okay i want to cut this off at 60 or 80 and then you come down here and set this to 60 or 80 to have it take over um it is doing its job though you know you can't just add a 10 inch sub and not have it work so it's very pretty much basic your power uh selector power plug, power switch. You get your subwoofer bypass pedal. This is something you don't usually get when you uh, buy a subwoofer. You literally just press that and now the subwoofer is off. Thunder outside. Nice, don't lose power please. Subwoofer on. Um, the reason I like this subwoofer is it has a very unique design feature that I've never seen before, and I'm kind of digging that about fluid. Like, I've not seen enough coaxial studio monitors, so that's cool as fuck. And also, I've never seen a subwoofer, and you can notice it's sitting sort of oddly. I've never seen a subwoofer, and I do this without ripping the plugs out. I'm going to unplug it, actually. So here is the 10-inch front firing, the fluid logo, and then here is the slot port, which is not straight out but a 45 degree angle down. So there's actually a 45 degree cut on the fascia of this. And then this slot port shoots straight down to the ground in front of you or in front of the sub. I've never seen that design before. And I think it does something special. Here's the power LED by the way, which is blue when it's running and blinking red and blue when it's not, or when you have the bypass set. So. Let's see what we're on now. Is it on? It says it's red. Of course, we probably haven't had any signal and we just turned it on. So let's just unpause that for a second. Oh God, yes. So it's doing its damnedest to try to fill and run the jewels. I like how you just lean it forward and it just sort of stays there. I'm gonna lower the input gain a little bit on that. And we'll put this controller on the floor. If you're going for a, it doesn't match the style. Wow, the lightning's really picking up. It doesn't match the style of the rounded front. I really fucking like the way this looks, how they pulled this off. This is just sort of like square box. Square box with funny, funny like. Going to rain. Fuck it. Um, on its own, that's actually a pretty compact 10 inch subwoofer. Uh, you know what? Is that the most compact 10 inch? Eh. There's been more compact 10 inches and it's doing its job. It's absolutely performing its functionality of matching with these speakers. And if I don't have actually these things cut off in the back, if I wanted to really blend it in, I would flip some of this. Wow, that was bright. I would flip some of these switches and I would flip, well, 
Dude, that was like an explosion. Did it blow up something? I would flip these to do some cutoff magic. Um, I would adjust the acoustic space if I need to, and then I'd blend it in with that. And you would have, so these are 500, that's 400, this is $900. Uh, that would be a dumb system. Be a dumb $900 system. But again, you're paying a lot extra for that fluid sub because it has XLR pass-throughs. Because normal subs don't have that. So, and it's only a 10 inch and it's not a very powerful 10 inch. I think it's like 200 something watts, 250 watts. Uh, don't quote me on that. I just don't remember with my brain hole. All right, before I get distracted by the rain. That was very cool, by the way. Um, glad I recorded one good thunder clap. I wish I was doing it during a sound demo. I could just put the sound demo mics out the windows. Okay, I got that guy. Um, yeah, so the fluid sub absolutely fucking accomplishing its job. But just like the Mackie sub, because I have the Mackie sub back there that's also a 10, it's just pricey. They can't sell it for less than $400 because then people would buy it without having the speakers and the custom paneling on the back that they need to do. Let me shut this off, actually. There. I like how you can just kick it to shut it off. And more things need to have just foot switches. I don't want you to talk anymore. Shut up. Next track. It's a hard, hard review because I love these speakers and I know people are looking at it going, Zeos, those are ugly. Zeos, they're $500. Zeos, I gotta buy a DAC. Zeos, I don't want powered monitors, but I want you to hear them. I need, I'm, I'm calling them out as better than Adams. And probably, I, I don't know if I'd put them against 306 JBLs. Probably in accuracy. I think the JBLs might wash sound a little better because of that fucking waveguide. But please trust me on this. They sound fucking amazing. I think I let like 17 bugs in here just now. I'm going to beat them off with the lights. No, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean beating them off. I did beat them. Sh sh all right, fine. We're going to end this review. Thank you for stopping by. I love these speakers. If you need powered monitors for just enjoyment's sake, get them. If you need powered monitors for actual work where you put them, you know, this close to your face and have the other one here, get them. If you need to get rid of this blue fucking LED, I will link blue tack in the description or black tech, gray tack, ZS link gray tack. Just put a wad of it over there. Cause the blue is like, if the blue didn't project, like it's so bright from one particular angle, it's like, it's not bright from here, but it's real bright from here. Then I'd be fine with it. I really like when it turns red though, when they're off and I can see that they've gone to sleep. It's fantastic. That's it. Power, studio monitors are not a complicated, I'm gonna do a video. I promise myself I have in my ideas list where I just go over the three different types of, of self-powered speakers. This is one type of self-powered, this is a studio monitor. It is just meant to be turned on, you don't touch it after that and everything else is controlled down here. Powered speakers, like those and the swans and the edifiers, that's something else, those have digital inputs and remote controls. And there's a third type. I don't remember what I was talking about. I know I said in my mind there was three. But anyway, I love these FX 80s and you can't stop me. This is Orbital Threat from Epic, Epic Score, which means I don't have to change the channel. They're fucking huge. Yeah, these are a the home theater in a box. Anyway, I'm done. She's done. I'm done. You're done. This is probably a 40 minute video of me just ranting, trying to explain why you should. And at the same time, why you might want to reconsider it. But at the same point, do it. Fluid FX ADOs. Thank you, Fluid, for sending them. Sorry I'm babbling, but I love these speakers, but I know my fan base is just like, but they're so fat, Zeus. Look how fat this thing is. Sometimes, sometimes you just need a nice thick one, you know, that's what I'm saying. So I'm saying, somebody needs a nice fat thick one. Makes those look minuscule though. Well, no, it makes those look 
tall and dumb. This feels like a better design. Um, thank you for the sub, which I could probably just kick the sub around because I do like the fact that I could just literally go, now we have a sub. Yeah, no, that's, that is so much sound right now. But it's not like the Swan M500s where it was so much sound that I couldn't stand it. I want to be here. It's a completely different shape of sound. I want to hear this coaxial speaker do its thing. And it's kind of sad because now what am I going to do with it? Where am I putting you? Guest bedroom? Guest bedroom. Bathroom? Bathroom. Guest bathroom. Apparently it's a Citizen Kane overture, which I've never seen Citizen Kane. I'll get on it eventually. But that just sounds fucking phenomenal. These sound like theater speakers. I I'm, I'm very much approve. Anyway, links to those, links to that. Um, maybe link to the Rotel. I think it's an older unit, so it's just here for a retro view. Link to the wallpaper. Patreon and subscribe star to see these reviews early. Because it's going to take you a couple days to really like absorb my rant to figure out what the fuck I was saying. So if you want to have that advantage of seeing it a few days earlier to understand the rant, Patreon and subscribe star get to see the reviews early. They participate in the yard sales. Maybe the sub goes in the yard sale because it's small enough and light enough to ship. It isn't like a monster. I, that would not, that's not a bad idea. So maybe the sub goes in the yard sale, which happens from the 1st to the 10th of every month, and I ship internationally. Although it's something like that, be prepared to I charge half shipping. And then uh, get access to the sound demos, which I just recorded the sound demo. You get access to the lossless sound demos. You still get sound demos on the other channel. In fact, in the description of this video, there is a sound demo link to another channel uh, where I keep the sound demos. Because in case they all get blocked and banned, they're not on this channel anymore like the other 200 that got blocked. If you're missing any of those old sound demos, there is a private stash of them now for patrons and subscribers or subscribers. Uh, $10 a month puts you in the behind the scenes private Telegram chat where you could ask me any questions you'd like as often as you'd like until I want to choke you. But then I don't actually choke you because you're paying me and that would be like you're paying me to choke you, which I'm pretty sure is prostitution. I don't want to get involved with that. And uh, Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides forum and go there, I'm sure there'll be a post, and if there isn't a post, make one, and then say, Zios, these are fucking ugly, and I'll be like, no, 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 motherfucker, these are nice. These make Zios happy to look at them. And that makes me happy to look at it. So, links to that in the description. We're done, I'm done, thank God, this is so long. How long, I'm gonna check, where's the camera from hand? How long, how long? 37 minutes! All right, when I guess the 30, I'm stopping. Goodbye, everyone. See you next day.